Hi, my name is Kristen Swanson, and I'm here today to talk to you about building better learning online, specifically for high school and higher ed situations. The content of today's presentation is derived from hundreds of pages of doctoral research, countless student interviews that I've conducted, and quite a few years of study. So my goal is to squeeze it into about five minutes. Wish me a little bit of luck on this one. When I began my research, I wanted to move beyond the no significant difference conversation. We know that delivering content online is just as effective as delivering content in the classroom. I just don't care about content. So my essential question when crafting my research was, how do students feel in existing online learning environments? And how can we as teachers use this information to build better learning environments? Student interview after student interview reveal that this is the most common feeling in an online course, stark isolation. Students feel marooned in a sea of content. And it's important to note that some struggle more than others, like that guy floating in the shack over there. Moore and Kearsley define transactional distance as the space that users feel in an online course. Interestingly, I bet that the people in this room experience much less transactional distance in online environments than students enrolled in traditional classes. And that's because many online courses focus on the content dump. You just navigate through the content, you memorize it, you take a quiz, you write a paper, and you're done. To top it off, when students enter traditional learning management systems, it's usually not a place that anyone would be interested in staying very long. Our existing designs remind me of this sign outside a donut shop in Canada. Hi, have a donut, stuff it down your throat, then leave. That's how we treat our online students. I mean, seriously, look at these interfaces from two of the leading online course delivery systems. Not only are there no photographs or pictures, but it's chock full of overwhelming didactic content. This is certainly not a place where I would choose to spend my time. Essentially, we've created these intellectual prisons where students are segregated from the rest of the world. They consume the content we provide, interact with each other in completely guarded spaces, and then leave. And once they leave, they can't even get back in. So stop it already. We know that really good online learning allows you to bring anyone into the conversation or project, whether they're registered or not. So seek out course guests, be liberal with your invitations, maybe even open up your course a la MIT or Stanford. We also know that really good online learning is highly collaborative. Whether you're speaking with someone from your state or someone halfway around the world, you're both working towards a common goal or idea. And the free tools that support this are countless. And finally, we know that really good online learning is inherently social. Sharing photos, words, and audio must be the norm because students need to build relationships with each other and they need to trust each other. So you might be wondering, what's an online teacher to do? We know that we can be stuck inside structures that don't support the tenets of online learning. But alas, my research has revealed three simple strategies to increase the efficacy of your learning environment regardless of the LMS you're using. First and foremost, require collaboration beyond the discussion board. Students should be building projects and texts together. They should be getting together synchronously on their own time to create and synthesize. Use multimedia to provide feedback and to give assignments. Remember, most of our communication happens via our intonation and our body language. The more information we can give students, the better. Here's an example of a video blog I created for my MED course last semester. Now trust me when I say that the editing and video production was amateur at best, but my course evaluations revealed that the students felt comfortable with me and they felt comfortable asking me questions. It's because I bombarded them with lots of nonverbal cues. Students who understand how they learn feel much more confident in online learning environments. So aid their metacognition, provide them with check-ins and planning structures that can help them succeed. And when students appear to be absent, give them a call. It goes a long way. So in summary, require collaboration. Give feedback to students that includes nonverbal cues, hopefully video, and help students understand how they learn best. These three strategies can help you build better learning online regardless of the structures in place. 
And this brings us to both the end and the beginning. While it's the end of my talk, it's the beginning of your time to experiment with online learning spaces in ways that encourage students to succeed.